Hey folks, if you'd like to support me or this channel, Moose University, in creating more video tutorials, then please consider making a financial contribution at my website, MoofUniversity.com. Thanks and enjoy the video. Okay, so free fatty acids. Little introduction and talking about their properties. First and foremost, what are they? They are hydrocarbon chains with carboxylic acid groups. Carboxylic acid groups. So what's their function? Their function basically is to be used as fuel. Why is that? Well, fatty acids are highly reduced molecules. They are electron rich. They have lots of carbon hydrogen bonds and carbon carbon bonds. They in fact they are more highly reduced, they're more highly reduced than carbs, carbohydrates, which is why they actually yield more energy than carbs upon oxidation. Another function of theirs is that they are the building blocks for various membrane lipids. And we'll see that uh, later in other videos on membrane lipids. So what does this mean, though? Hydrocarbon chains with carboxylic acid groups. What's that structure kind of look like? Well, if you imagine R as being some hydrocarbon chain, and then the rest of this here being a carboxylic acid functional group, this is a fatty acid. This is a general structure. And this R group, of course, can be any hydrocarbon chain. And I'll give a quick example in just a second. But this thing is an acid, right? And specifically, this hydrogen here is the acidic hydrogen, which means that if this fatty acid acts as an acid, gives up its proton, it will exist in this conjugate base form and give this carboxylate ion. Of course, the H plus would be out there. OK. Now, typically at biological pHs, this is what we'd see, the carboxylate form. And so, so what can this actually kind of look like? This R group we just said is a hydrocarbon chain. So what can that look like? Here's an example. Let's just make this, I don't know, let's make it six carbons long. So this is the first carbon here. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons. This is a fatty acid. That thing, if we want to copy and paste it, copy, paste, right, at biological pHs, it would exist in this form without that proton, like that, okay? Now, how long are these chains usually? We just denote it as R here. But how long are these chains usually? Well, they can be from four carbons long up to 36 carbons long, typically, and they're usually even numbered, right? So you'll see um, in nature, typically, fatty acids will be like 16 carbons long, 18 carbons long, things like that, even numbers. Now, how do we classify fatty acids? How do we divide them up? Well, fatty acids, one of the primary ways they're classified is they're split up into saturated fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids. So sometimes these terms can be a little bit confusing. Uh, let me give you their definitions first, and I'll ref uh, discuss why it's talking about saturated versus unsaturated. Saturated fatty acids have zero or no carbon-carbon double bonds in their hydrocarbon chain. So I've got, I've got one drawn here. Looks like this. In fact, I'll remove the numbers for a second. So actually, I'll show you. I, this is a 10-carbon long saturated fatty acid. Between none of these carbons do we have a carbon-carbon double bond. We have a double bond here between the carbon and the oxygen, but there are no carbon-carbon double bonds in this hydrocarbon chain. Unsaturated fatty acids, however, have at least, at least one carbon-carbon double bond in the hydrocarbon chain. Okay. Now, once you have a double bond in the hydrocarbon chain, you can either have you can either have a cis double bond or a trans double bond, and which is why that, that's going to be a further sort of classification here. You can have cis unsaturated fatty acids and trans unsaturated fatty acids. And again, I've drawn a couple of them here. I've drawn a cis one here, and I've drawn a trans one here. And of course, each of those is also 10 carbons long. Now between Carbons 5 and 6, in both cases, there is a double bond. But here, this one is cis. 
in that this group and this group, the two large groups on the uh, carbons of 5 and 6, are on the same side of the double bond. And what that causes is it causes the chain to bend or form this little thing called a kink. Kink, some people call it a bend, whatever. Same idea. Okay. But with this trans double bond, the groups are on opposite sides. And so this thing ends up being fairly straight, pretty much like the straight chain saturated fatty acid. Now you might be thinking, what, why is this called saturated? Why is this called unsaturated? Why don't they have another term that's a little bit more intuitive that refers to these double bonds? Well, what they're saying here is that this thing, the, the saturated fatty acids are saturated with hydrogens. So they, these carbons have as many hydrogens as they can possibly have. As soon as you put a double bond somewhere, there are less hydrogens. So if we take, for instance, um, carbons 5 and 6. Here, there are two hydrogens on carbon 5 and two, car or two hydrogens on carbon 6. Whereas over here, in both of these cases, these only have one hydrogen each. Hydrogen there, hydrogen there. So they are not saturated with hydrogens. They don't have as many possible hydrogens as they could have. Okay. Now, there's another way to divide up these unsaturated fatty acids, and I have it over here. Scroll back up a little bit, hidden away from you guys. So unsaturated fatty acids can also be divided up into these two things, MUFA and PUFA. Funny, actually, MUFA was one of my nicknames growing up, and that's actually where the MUF in MUF University comes from. Fun fact. <laughs> okay, so um, the UFA portion basically is unsaturated fatty acid. So we have a M UFA and P UFA. So the UFA is unsaturated fatty acid. The M refers to mono, which means one. The P is poly, which means many. So here what this division or this classification is basically referring to a mono unsaturated fatty acid means there's one carbon carbon double bond in the chain. Whereas polyunsaturated fatty acids have two or more, right, two or more carbon-carbon double bonds in their chain. Okay, now how does all that play a role when it comes to melting point? Okay, so we got to think about van der Waals forces or intermolecular interactions. So when I think about van der Waals forces, I think about the ability of molecules to stack. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of describe what that means in just a second, but there are two key factors when thinking about stacking to increase van der Waals interactions. Stacking increases van der Waals interactions. So let me just show you here. If I had a fatty acid that was, I don't know, this many carbons long, and I had another one next to it, I could stack them like this, such that the atoms are as close to each other as possible. All right, so maybe I can stack like that, and I can have another one here, and that'll look maybe a little bit like that. Those negative charges wouldn't actually be next to each other, but the idea is that these atoms would interact and have these van der Waals interactions. So these carbons here would, would be interacting, these carbons here would be interacting, and there, and there, and those would form temporary dipoles that are these van der Waals interactions. So hopefully that's not too fuzzy from GChem. But the idea is that uh, the more stacking we have, the more van der Waals interactions that we have. So there are two factors to consider when we're talking about this, and one of them is the chain length. So an increase in chain length will actually increase the melting point of a fatty acid. How is that? Well, if we have an increase in the chain's, chain's length, that means we have more atoms. More atoms. So if we have more atoms, we have more temporary dipoles between these atoms, which means we have more van der Waals interactions. More van der Waals interactions, more intermolecular interactions, means that it would be harder to break these molecules apart, which would mean a higher melting point. So just so I can give an example of that, imagine, let's call this example number one. If we have, let's say, a one, two, three, four, five, six carbon fatty acid, right? And we stack some of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. They have interactions between these carbons and between the hydrogens. Right, I'm just drawing it, the hydrogen, the carbons here. 
the hydrogens, of course, are implied. But we have a certain number of van der Waals interactions. But So that's a 6-carbon fatty acid, right? So a 6-carbon fatty acid. But what if we had that versus a 10-carbon fatty acid? So if we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 carbons, and another 10 carbons, right? So a situation where we have more carbons means more atoms, right? We'd have more of these temporary dipoles in between these atoms. It's not just more carbons, right? It's also, like I said, more hydrogens as well. But the idea is that this, this uh, longer chain would have the higher melting point. Okay. Um, now, another factor that plays a role is degrees of unsaturation. And, of course, unsaturation is talking about the number of double bonds, right? Unsaturated fatty acids have double bonds. Now, an increase in the number of cis double bonds will actually decrease the melting point. Now, I had to put cis here, and you'll see why in just a second. The reason why is that if we have an increase in the number of cis double bonds, recall that cis double bonds have these little bends or these kinks, which means that we have, if we have more, if we have more cis double bonds, we have more kinks or more bends. And this will actually reduce the ability of fatty acids to stack. So we would actually have less stacking. So if we have less stacking, that means less temporary dipoles. So a decrease in the number of van der Waals interactions, which means that the molecules would be easier to break apart therefore having a lower melting point. So if you imagine something like, um, if you take an example of a sort of, uh, let's say, a fatty acid that has, let's just draw it like this, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so there's 8 carbons here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, 8. And this is a cis double bond versus something that has uh, eight carbons, but it's a trans double bond. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And even between those same number of carbons, let's just number these carbons here. This is carbon number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's put the the double bond even in the same location, right there between five and six. So here we have a straight chain in this trans double uh, trans fatty acid, but over here we have this kink. So if we try to stack more of these, um, you can you can probably see that that the ability to stack has been reduced, right? If we just draw another one, basically right next to it, notice that these these molecules might not be able to to get in and you know the atoms might not be able to, to stack as nicely and as neatly and as tightly, right, as 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 they can. So if these interactions between these carbons here, right, versus if you have another one of these, another one of these trans fatty acids right next to it, that can actually stack probably a lot closer, right? So if there's that double bond there. So you can you can see that these could probably pack more tightly, right? The trans fatty acids. So um, so here, uh, those are the two factors, chain length and degree of unsaturation. So between these two, which one would have the higher melting point? This one would have the higher melting point uh, because, of course, they have the same, the same number of carbons in their chain length, but the, the, the cis double bond here uh, reduces the ability of the fatty acids to stack properly and therefore lowers the van der Waals interactions and lowers the melting point. Now, it just so happens that this is important because there are uh, fats that are uh, fats that contain fatty acids that have saturated um, saturated chains tend to be solid, and those that contain so those are things like uh, animal fat and like lard and things like that, whereas um, fat liquid fats like oils uh, tend to have cis double bonds. So I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. Yo, if you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe for more content. And if you know anybody who might find the videos helpful, then please share it with them. Thanks. Happy studying.